Matthew, I'm really looking forward to exploring this topic with you again. We don't solve our problems, we outgrow them. Yes, me too. Um, it's going to be quite exciting. Uh, tell us more about it, Owen. Well, first of all, I want to make the distinction between an everyday problem and what I call a more existential problem, problems that create great angst. We all know how to solve everyday problems. It could be as simple as I've got bills to pay, I have money in a checking account, but not enough. I need to transfer money from my savings such that I can pay my bills at the end of the month. There are countless kinds of problems like that that we all manage uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. When it comes to the more existential problems, these are recurring patterns. We might find ourselves in triangulated relationships over and over again. Or we might have this ongoing problem with our mother-in-law or with our spouse or with a kid. And, you know, it creates this great angst for us. As you know, I love the distinctions of words. So looking at the word solve versus outgrow. And, you know, in the dictionary, if we go to the word solve, what it actually says is that to solve means to loosen. But the way we use solve in our society today is it, it, it's more like uh, we effort and we push and, um, you know, if all we have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So we attack it. And when it comes to outgrowing, it's kind of like the, the metaphor of our shoes don't fit any longer. And, uh, and it hurts. But when we outgrow, we, uh, there's a relief that comes from putting our foot into a shoe that actually fits. We've shifted somehow. And it's natural for kids, for instance, to outgrow development stages. We, we see that, we experience that. But we don't think of that from an adult perspective. And yet we do, we outgrow. There's many things that people have outgrown in their lives that if they were just to take a moment and think through, it's like, oh, those things don't have the same meaning as they used to have. So you, you use a metaphor of, of a camera lens, and I think that's really helpful here. So could you say more about that? Yeah, I think it's a really powerful metaphor to use that, you know, in these everyday problems, a zoom lens is the best kind because we can really zoom in on the details of how we best need to show up in order to solve that problem. Um, however, with those relationship problems in our life or those problems uh, with uh, that we might be facing at work or even with our own self-concept, this wide angle lens, this panoramic uh, lens is really what's called for. Mm -hmm. and, uh, an example is, is often the acting out child in, in, in a family that uh, the child acting out is, uh, is often seen as the problem when in fact uh, what the real problem is is you know mom's cancer that no one's talking about and, and the child acting out is, is really acting out the anxiety and, and, and the angst in the family system. Uh, another uh, example might be um, you know, an addiction, um, let's say, you know, overeating, let's say, um, where um, the person thinks that the problem is the food and if I just uh, hide the, you know, the sugar in the house or something, I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. As opposed to, to really seeing how, how the, the overeating uh, fills an inner sense of emptiness. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a way of, of giving ourselves, yet the price is that it, it numbs us as well, mm -hmm. um, numbs us to change and to being curious about what's really going on for ourselves. Yeah, I think your, your uh, comment here about a child being brought into therapy, you know, their behavior suddenly looks like a problem. When that then is zoomed in as the problem, um, we fail to look at the, the bigger picture. So yes, we can work on the behavior of the child, but we actually miss the, the, the basis of the problem. So um, I think another easy example for people to understand is how um, smoking, you know, is seen as a problem. But for some people, smoking is the only time they can take for themselves in their life. Hmm. You know, they, they have their, their, their life wired in such a way that going for a cigarette break is the only plausible reason or excuse that they can come up with to justify their need for a break. Very often the solution becomes the problem. Hmm. Hmm. So, we talked a bit about this before. What makes our problems, you know, certain problems, impossible to solve? Hmm. Yes, uh, from the paradigm that we're talking about, with the zoom angle lens, we're not going to be able to solve our relationship problems. We're not going to be able to solve um, problems around our dieting or around managing our uh, obsessiveness, uh, whatever it might be, that we need that wide angle lens. Um, but uh, another way to look at that is 
um, that the rewards of being stuck um, outweigh the pain of change. Right. And uh, you know, we get it that uh, that that just the anticipation of, of of change gets us into kind of catastrophizing or, or thinking the worst, as opposed to that actually staying in the realm of the problem causes a lot more pain than growth. Growth, liberation, a more confident self. The help we need is to get that kind of Zen mind, that big mind that allows us to loosen our perspective and be able to shift the problem around, marinate in it. That's a, a word you love. Um, and I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about that difference between marinating and, and what's that other stewing. word? Stewing. Uh, stewing, yeah. yeah. Tell us more about that. Yeah, when we look at problems as having a purpose, like mm. they actually serve us, uh, that's a huge shift for us. Now, one of the perspectives really needs to be that we need to be willing to marinate in the problem. So in, in some ways to sort of surrender back into the problem, like you would put a, a piece of steak into a sauce to marinate. And we leave it there. And the, the, the sauce works on the steak and over time it tenderizes, it gives it more flavor. And our problems can actually do that to us. It can, it, more flavors, like it can give us more wisdom, it can give us a fresher perspective. And it can tenderize us in ways that give us a larger capacity for life. But we can't do that so long as we're over-identified with the problem. I think of people who, who you know, will say, I'm depressed, as opposed to, well, there's a part of me that suffers from depression, or there's a part of me that's depressed. And to look at how depression might actually serve the bigger picture of their life. And so rather than rush to take a pill to solve the depression, or is to just to be... So to, to be in the depression. Uh, and in that level of acceptance, the depression will actually shift. But I find that when people push, when they, they, they really try to effort too, too much uh, with any problem, that's where this over-identification, it's like they know, they, they, they've claimed their depression as who they are. Oh, you know so-and-so, they're depressed. It's like other people then start talking about you as if you are this, this thing as opposed to, it's just something that we're going through. Mm. Things loosen up, and all of a sudden we can put our, our foot into a shoe that's bigger. Um, and we don't have to have this experience of walking around. Carl Jung's wonderful saying that most people are walking around in shoes that are too small for them. Mm. Yeah, I think it's such a great uh, saying. So uh, this is the kind of work that we'll be doing with people uh, as we embark on this journey. So we're really inviting people to uh, look at their problems um, in a very different way, um, mm. and we're not giving the you know the ten steps to this or uh, you know the the five secrets to that. We're really talking about a way to be with our problems without this compulsive need to solve them, to be rid of them, because like Hercules, we might in fact just be creating more problems. Right. And in fact, uh, as therapists, that's what we see. So we're looking at uh, inviting people to. Um, to get that lightness around a problem, to create some distance from the problem, to kind of be up on the mountain a bit more than rather than in the valley, identifying with uh, every uh, little facet of the problem, getting that wide-angle perspective. Nice. Um, hmm. Great, thank you. Okay, look forward to working with you again. All right.